I was recently on a shoot where I was filming interviews using multiple cameras. Today, I'm gonna to take those files and show you my multi-camera workflow within DaVinci Resolve. Before we get started, the most important thing you can do to set yourself up for success in the edit is to use time code during your shoot. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of what time code is. There are plenty of other videos out there explaining that far better than I ever could. For this video, what you need to know is that I was using two cameras and an external audio recorder, all which were running the same time code. I used tentacle syncs to input time code across all of my different devices. This is gonna be a huge time saver. Time code is metadata that's embedded into the audio and video files, which the computer can interpret and synchronize instantaneously. There's no guesswork, so use time code. Another thing that was super helpful is that we were using a slate while we were shooting. The slate allows me to visually recognize the video files once I'm in the editing software. You'll see what I mean a little later on. All right, let's get started. Before we jump into DaVinci, we first need to get organized with our media. I'll show you how I usually set up my media on my storage devices. I'll usually create a master folder that encapsulates the entire project, and I organize it by the date that it was shot on. If the shoot was multiple days, I'll just name the master folder the first day that the shoot was on, and then I'll create separate folders for each day of the shoot. In this case, it was just a one day shoot. Within this folder, I usually start with these three folders, video, audio, and graphics. Within this folder, I was using two cameras, so I have my A camera and my B camera folders. In audio, I have a folder named F6, that stands for the audio recorder I was using, the Zoom F6. Now, if I'm using music or sound effects that are specific to a project, I might put those in the audio folder as well. But for this video, I'm not using any, so I'll just leave those out. Graphics, same thing. If I'm using graphics, I'll throw those in this folder. It's really important to stay organized up front, just in case any of your files get unlinked or you transfer these files to another drive. It's much easier for DaVinci to find these files if they're nice and organized. All right, now let's dive into DaVinci. I'm gonna go ahead and import all of my media into my DaVinci project. And I'm gonna set up the folder hierarchy the same way that I did on my storage device. I'm also gonna create a fourth bin that's called timelines, which will house all of my timelines. Now that we've got all of our media imported, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna separate and organize all of my real-time footage from my off-speed footage. This is gonna be important for when you're syncing everything up and creating a multicam clip. In this case, I know that I only shot off-speed footage on my A-cam, so I'm gonna go ahead, create a separate folder, put all my off-speed footage in there, and leave the real-time footage in the A001 folder. So now I have all of my off-speed footage in the off-speed folder, and I have all my real-time footage in my A001 folder. And I know I didn't shoot any off-speed footage on my B-cam, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Now I'm gonna show you a trick that essentially got me to switch from Final Cut over to DaVinci Resolve. If we take a listen to the footage now, we can hear that the audio quality is not good. And so I made a mantra out of that, and my mantra is to secure... That's because we're listening to the onboard camera audio and not the externally recorded audio. The amazing thing about DaVinci is that you can actually attach your externally recorded audio to your video files within the media pool. This basically allows you to preview your video clips with the high quality audio directly from within your media pool. It also allows you to drag these clips on your timeline with the external audio already attached. And I'll show you how to do that now. First, you're gonna wanna select all of your footage and your externally recorded audio. So I'm just pressing command and selecting these folders, which will select all of these files here. Now I'm gonna select all, right click, and then go up to auto sync audio. And then I'm gonna check the time code dialog and press sync. Now, if we take a listen to that same clip, we can hear that the externally recorded audio is attached to the video. I made a mantra out of that, and my mantra is to securely cherish, and that's how I live my life. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a timeline using this clip so we can see what that looks like visually. I'll just call this test for now. Down here, we can see that there is a linked icon and boom one. Boom one is what I named the audio track within my Zoom F6 audio recorder. So that metadata just shows up automatically. If we right click and we go to clip attributes under the audio tab, we can see 
that boom one linked is now our audio. Click on this, embedded channel one and embedded channel two are the original audio files. We don't wanna use those. Let's just go ahead and use boom one linked. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this test timeline. Now that we have all of our video and audio files synced within the media pool, it becomes very easy to create a multi-camera clip. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my A camera and B camera clips, select all, right click, and then go up to create new multi-cam clip using selected clips. I'm gonna go ahead and name this multi-camera master. For angle sync, I'm gonna to wanna to click on time code. For angle name, I'm going to select angle or camera. This is automatically gonna name your video tracks. And then I'm gonna select detect clips from using the same camera. This is going to take all of the video clips from the same camera and put it on one video track and then take all the clips from the other camera and put it on a separate video track. Now, in my case, I was using two red Komodos, so the camera names are already embedded in the metadata. If that's not the case for you, you're gonna wanna go into your metadata over here and input either the angle or the camera number, and then you'll be able to organize your multi-camera clip that way. I'm gonna uncheck move source clips to original bin because I wanna maintain the hierarchy that I've already organized and created within my project. Press create. And then at the bottom here, you'll see that my multi-camera sequence has been created. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that into my timelines bin. Now with multi-camera clips, you're not gonna be able to just double click and have them open up in the timeline. What you're gonna to have to do is right click on the clip and say open in timeline. This will bring it up in your timeline viewer. Now here you can see that all of my A cam clips are on the first video track and all of my B camera clips are on the second video track. If your camera doesn't contain the metadata naming the camera or the angles, then DaVinci will create as many video tracks as there are clips. And that's just gonna be a huge headache. So go ahead and make sure that all your metadata is sorted out before you create the multicam clip. Once I've created the multicam clip, I'm going to create a multi-camera timeline. You can do that by right-clicking on create new timeline using selected clips. I'm gonna call this the master timeline. Depending on what monitor you're using, you might see something different here. But if you're on a smaller laptop screen and you don't see the multicam viewer, hide the inspector tab or whatever tab is over here on your right. You'll see this icon here. You'll click on that and it'll bring up the double viewer. And then you'll go down here and click multicam. Now I can see both of my angles at the same time. The master timeline is what I'm going to extract all of the other editing timelines from. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the master timeline using option D on a Mac. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the master copy. Now, bonus trick here, if you wanna see multiple timelines at once, click on this icon and select display stack timelines. So now you'll see the master copy. If I wanna bring up the master as well, now I have the master, but I'm gonna go ahead and close out the master. Within the master copy timeline, I'm going to extract my first editing timeline. And this is where the slate really comes into play. I can see here which scene or which interviewee that I'm on. For this timeline, I'm gonna name it whatever is on the slate. In this instance, I'm gonna name it Freedom Friday, Carissa. Within this timeline, I'm gonna make a cut at the very end of Carissa's interview. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this timeline before I do anything else. So now we have a copy of Freedom Friday, Carissa. Back within Freedom Friday, Carissa, I'm gonna select everything after Carissa's interview by clicking Y, and then I'm going to delete. And now all we're left with is Carissa's interview. Now within the copy of Carissa's timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and delete Carissa's section. I'll scrub to the next interviewee here, delete all that dead space. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this timeline whatever's on the slate next. 
So in this case, RS Eric. And I'll repeat the process. I'll make a cut here. I'll duplicate Eric's timeline. And then I'll delete everything after Eric's interview. So I'm left with just Eric. I'll go in the copy, delete Eric's interview, and repeat the process all over again. Now we can begin to edit the interviews. I'm not going to go too deep into the editing process, but what's cool about DaVinci and most software is that you can essentially play the clip and cut in real time. Before I started working here, I took one of their workshops and it really changed my life. What I really liked was in the framework, they have you look at seven areas of your life. And so you can cut in real time. And if you don't like a cut that you made or you wanna switch back to another angle, hover the playhead over the clip that you wanna change, hold down option and choose another angle. Once you've made your cuts and you're happy with the way you've edited down your interview, you can begin to color grade the footage. In this case, I'm using red raw files. In the current state of this timeline, I'm not able to fully take advantage of the red raw capabilities. And you can see that here under the color tab, all of these show up as multicam clips and all of my raw settings are grayed out. So I'll come back to the timeline viewer. I'll select all these clips and I'll want to flatten my multicam clip. Now there are two options here. Copying multicam grades means that whatever color adjustments that you made to these clips within this timeline will be retained. Retaining grades from angles means that whatever color corrections or grades that you made within the actual multicam clip, so in my case, the multicam master, these clips, then those will be retained when you flatten this clip. But in this case, neither applies. I haven't made any adjustments, so I can choose either, but I'll just go ahead and say copy multicam grades. Now, back at the color tab, you can see that these are reading as red raw files and I have control of my raw settings. That's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you the basics of my multicam workflow within DaVinci Resolve. If you have any tips and tricks for a multi-camera editing workflow within DaVinci Resolve, I would love to hear them. So please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.